Well, hey folks, my name is Brad, and today I have hiked up into the mountains of Vermont to be here. This forest in the 1800s was once a working farm, and maybe you can see behind me the old stone-lined foundation of the home, which is long gone. And today I've brought my metal detector to see if maybe we can find a few cool old things in the ground. Now, I know for a fact that these folks were poor farmers. We're more than likely not going to find a clay pot full of gold coins, but everything I find should hopefully tell a story, and those things are some of my favorites to find. I'm gonna get my metal detector out, see what we can find today. Well, just a couple weeks ago, I found this massive half of a baseball-sized crotal bell or jingle bell. Anytime I find a jingle bell, I'll get the cameras out for it because they're one of my favorite things to find. And I just found, well, it's not quite as big as the one last time, but it is all in one piece. It appears to be a really nice, ooh, look at that, a really nice uh, white bronze. Sometimes they're green in color, sometimes they're white in color like this. I believe this is an older one. And as usual, sometimes there are numbers to dictate what size it is, and sometimes there are maker marks on the bottom. It doesn't seem like this one has any maker marks or size, unfortunately. But it does have these beautiful cast in petals down here. And you know what? Let's get out the pocket knife, get that dirt out there, and see if it'll jingle again after 200 years or so. Let's see. Are we ready? I hear it. Do you hear it? The little iron loop that would have gone through this, which would have affixed it to the strap, uh, is still in there. Which leads me to believe either the strap broke, or maybe the, the loop broke somewhere else. But there it is. That's a great find. Like I said, every time I find one of these, I'm going to show the camera because I get excited about them. Hopefully you do too. Let's move on, see what else we can find here. So when metal detecting farms or homes from this time period, in my experience, there isn't a huge variety of different things that we find out here. A lot of times, buckles, buttons, coins, occasionally some household items like drawer pulls. And so whenever I find something that I just don't recognize at all, I get pretty excited and that's something we have here. It didn't sound great on the metal detector. I was surprised to see that it is seemingly a nice quality brass when it came out of the ground. And at first glance, it resembles like it's a broken miniature reins guide, which would have a loop up here like this was broken and bent. But looking at this, this side is quite thick doesn't seem to marry up to that side. I believe this is as designed, and I'm wondering if it's just a simple, like a coat hook. You kind of screw it into some wood, hang your hat, hang your jacket. I'm really not sure. So that's an interesting, interrupted by a woodpecker. So that's a pretty interesting little artifact. A first for me, it's a simple little hanger, it's my guess. It could be part of a musket, part of anything that I'm just not aware of, but that's going to be my guess. Really, really cool. Well, given the age of the things that we're finding today, the research that I've done on this place, uh, the coins that were in the pockets of the folks that lived here were more than likely you know, like the big copper ones, the big pennies. And I haven't found any of those yet, but the coin that I just found it's quite a bit later than that. Uh, it's very likely this was dropped by an inhabitant when they lived here towards the end of the 1800s. But it was still a little bit of a surprise when I found it. I wasn't really sure if it was a button or if it was a coin. Um, and it's really not in very good shape. I've spent a few minutes already just kind of scraping with my fingernail the uh, corrosion and brown oxidation that's on this coin. Just enough so that I can identify it. 
and just in the right light, we can see the left facing bust of an Indian head scent. Now this could be as late as 1909. More than likely though, this is the end of the 1800s given how corroded it is. Now the folks that lived up here, they didn't have much. We're more than likely not going to find a giant silver dollar that they accidentally dropped and forgot about. Uh, this more than likely hurt when they lost it. Uh, so when I say, I hope we find some more, not for their sake, of course, but let's see if we find a few more. Well, I just found something that it, it was right on the surface. I thought for sure it was going to be junk. It was just under these leaves. I brushed them aside, and here we can see a little tag of sorts. The back appears as though it had some iron, or it was attached to something iron. The tag itself is brass, and I've already spent some time on my phone looking up what this could be. <laughs> because of the combination of letters, it's quite hard. But as we can see, H-E-R-R, -R, railroad, I would guess. H-E, railroad. Now, I'm not familiar with any H-E railroads here in Vermont, but when I try to search this on my phone, it's hard to get a good result. So maybe some of you folks out there are familiar with an H-E railroad somewhere surrounding Vermont or in Vermont. But that's pretty cool. It makes me wonder what it was on. It's clearly not like a, a baggage tag uh, if you were traveling. It seems as though it was affixed to something. I'll do some research on my own and if I fail, maybe some of you folks out there recognize that. Well, for being a farm from the middle to end of the 1800s, I haven't found any buttons and typically the metal buttons are plentiful at places like this. But what I have found two of now are these. This is a suspender. It's a stamped brass construction it seems like and you can see this uh, brown corrosion uh, would have at one time likely been a silver plating or a gold plating. It would have looked very nice but cheap brass. Uh, but the one that I found earlier still has all of its silver plate still on there. Most of it, at least. Still relatively shiny. I was really hoping there was going to be a name brand on this, but it does not appear as though there is. You can see the iron segment of this is still there. Two different styles of the same thing. Both interesting. It makes me wonder why they haven't been losing any buttons, or maybe I just haven't been finding them. I suspect out in, you know, the agricultural fields, all these old... New England stone walls have been surrounding crops. There's probably a ton of buttons out there where they're working and plowing and harvesting. But around the home where I am right now, it seems like they were losing suspenders. Pretty interesting. So on most metal detectors, big round pieces of iron or sometimes flat pieces of iron will throw off a good target and you'll wind up digging it only to be disappointed that it's trash. In this spot that I'm in right now, I've been finding a lot of stuff like that. Broken off pieces of farming hose, just kind of sheet metal, and I just got a pretty nice target. I dug it up and I said, oh, what is this? Another hunk of iron? What is it, like a nut or something? And then I just kind of rubbed it. And I said, oh no, there's green in there. That appears to be a piece of brass. And upon closer inspection, this appears to be a tiny little padlock, a tiny little padlock. So you can see here, this is the keyhole cover. This gives you a better idea of the shape. It's almost like a heart shape. I can't really tell if the shackle is still there. I think it is. Now I'm gonna do my best in the moment to get it cleaned up a little bit and maybe we can read the keyhole cover and get a better idea of what this thing looks like here.
All right, well, I got it all cleaned off the most I'm comfortable doing out here, and this thing tells a story, I think. So we can see that the keyhole cover is up, and I believe the key is still broken off in the keyhole. It's all filled up with iron. The shackle is a little bit there. It's brass, but it has a, such a clean break, I'm thinking that perhaps it was cut off. So somebody broke off the tiny little key inside this padlock, couldn't get it open and had to cut the shackle to get into whatever they had locked up. And it's such a small padlock, it had to have been a tiny little box or, I don't know, use your imagination. But in any case, uh, they had to break the lock in order to get into it. Was it somebody with nefarious intentions? Probably not, because the key's still stuck in there. It's little things like this that tell a story uh, that I find most interesting and I get most excited about finding. Tiny little brass padlock that had to be broken into. Well, I'm in kind of an interesting spot right here. The home foundation is right behind you and it kind of comes down. There's, I wouldn't call it a stone wall, but there's a row of stones and then it drops down as a little step. So I'm wondering if this was just kind of a little rise that the home was on, but in any case, I have a pretty nice target under the stones right here. On my metal detector, it's an 82, which probably a button or something similar size we're gonna to have to remove a couple of these stones to figure out what it is. I will put them right back where they were when I'm done, but uh, I think I have to move this one. Maybe I can do it with just one. Put that one right back. Nope, we're gonna to have to move this one too. Maybe you can hear in my headphones, it's underneath this. It's a big one. Here it is. Put this still back. There, pretty much how it was. Now, unfortunately, it is not a bag of coins, but it is something. Let's take a look at it. Uh, it appears to be a flange of some kind, perhaps for a lamp or a candlestick or maybe even a hand tool. It is made out of brass and round, which is why it sounded so good on the metal detector. But that's probably one of my most common questions I get. Do you ever check the stone walls with your metal detector? I do, and haven't found that stash of gold coins quite yet, but this is pretty interesting. Well, I said earlier that I haven't found any buttons here, which is somewhat surprising to me. And it's getting towards the end of the day, I still have not found any metal buttons except for the thing I just found. And I say that because I'm not sure 100% that it's a button, but it makes sense given how these folks were just poor farmers up here. Seems like something they may do. Here you can see a handle to a spoon that I found. Um, it seems like actually it's a, a fairly old one, nice white bronze spoon handle. And this is the thing I just found, which I believe is a spoon handle that was cut. It was cut and there's a hole driven right through the center of it. And my best guess, someone in the household lost a button. Maybe it's out here, maybe we'll find it. Maybe took an old spoon that was already broken, chopped it and made a button out of it. I can't imagine what else this might be. There's a hole in the middle for the thread to go through Makes sense to me. And it really says something about the resourcefulness of the folks that were living up here almost 200 years ago. They did what they needed to do to get by. And it's super interesting that we can find evidence of that. All right, like I said, it's getting towards the end of the day. Let's see if we can find a couple more things today before we start hiking on out of here. Well, folks who are in the hobby of metal detecting 
are probably aware of looking for that final target, right? It's almost the end of the day for me here. And for maybe the last half an hour, I've been searching for the final thing before I get out of here. And you find a target, you dig it up, and it's maybe a modern building. You say, oh, well, that one doesn't count. You keep searching for that final target. One more hole. That's all we need. Well, I got my final target. I dug it up, and I'm fairly certain, maybe you can see over here, uh, that it is another small cent coin. So we will say this is the final hole, unless it's like from 1995, then maybe I'll search for the final <laughs> after that. But we're gonna look at this, I don't know, by the patina here, it looks like it's pretty old. Uh, so we're going to look at it together. I haven't at all, you can probably see the dirt is still stuck to it here. So we're gonna pop it off. I have to guess it's an Indian head sin. It is quite thick though, so it could also be the infamous flying eagle. Can't tell. I'm gonna get out a spray bottle. We'll spray it off and see if maybe that helps. Oh, and quick tip for folks who metal detect. If you have a spray bottle and it has a cap like this, I have some copper tape wrapped around the cap uh, because I lose this pretty much every time and then I can find it with my metal detector. Okay, I see the Indian head. So it's not a flying eagle scent, but it is incredibly thick. It's pretty rough, and I don't know if that brown oxidization is gonna make it home. So this might be the best view of it we end up getting. It looks like you can almost make out the date down there at the bottom too. But because of the thickness of this, it's a very uh, short range of dates. End of the 1850s, beginning of the 1860s, somewhere around there. Well, that was a good final target. I'm gonna get all my stuff packed up and uh, get everything we found today out and we'll take a look at it. All right, well, it was a very long day for me. I had a ton of fun, but I honestly didn't find a lot of stuff. The things that I did find though, I'm pretty excited about, like the padlock and the bell and of course the coins. Got it all laid out here. Let's take a look. Okay, well, off camera, I just spent the last 10 minutes looking for my fat Indian head scent. I couldn't find it for the life of me. It was inside the bell. Uh, I shook it out and out it fell. So that was a funny moment, not captured on camera, thankfully. In the back, we have a couple spoons. This one is super silver plated. All the plating is flicking off. Maybe you can see. Uh, I found a bunch of this stuff. This is just melted lead. You can see it just would have been a puddle. Probably landed on the ground making, you know, could have been anything. Everybody wants to say musket balls because that's definitely the coolest thing. But uh, they would have been using and melting lead uh, to make all sorts of things. Here we have two pieces, actually this might go to this, a uh, piece of a harmonica reed plate. This is a piece of leather with a brass rivet. Toe tap goes on the end of a boot. We found this together. This was uh, just a flange under a rock. Our railroad tag, looking forward to see if anybody might recognize that. Uh, this is just a bit of a hanger, I believe, although the end is forked here. I haven't seen anything like that before. We have this hanger, a couple suspenders, of course the bell, our little padlock, which tells a great story, homemade button, possibly, and then our two Indian head pennies. Overall, not a ton of valuable things now or when the folks were living here, but interesting nonetheless. All right, well, I'm gonna take the long hike out of here. This is one of my first videos that you've seen. I post one of these every single Friday. So if you liked what you saw today, go ahead and subscribe or just swing on by next week. I'll be here, hopefully I'll see you then.